welcome back we are now in the introductory chapter for the upstream lng technology what we shall learn in this chapter we will learn about what is natural gas how we define this natural gas secondly how this natural gas is produced in the nature thirdly what are the compositions of natural gas it will be followed by the various steps which are needed for the processing of natural gas and this will be ending with some basic terminologies which we use in the petroleum and natural gas industries first query what is natural gas natural gas is a gaseous fossil fuel which is found in various types of oil fields natural gas fields and coal beds in this case you can note that oil fields and natural gas fields are generally located in the sea there are a few in the land too but coal bed is always in the landscape natural gas as such is also obtained from various other land sources like marsh gas uh, wherever you are finding some wetland because of the anaerobic oxidation we get some kind of gases which are also called natural gas swamp gas or landfill gases let us now see how the natural gas is generated in the nature it may have different sources first of them is the decay of the organic debris which have been accumulating under the sea over a long period of time since the birth of this earth and under the sea due to the large pressure and also some of the heat due to the geothermal energy they convert the big molecules and break them up into smaller gas molecules basically hydrocarbons which are taken out as natural gas this conversion of this debris into the coal or natural gas depend on various factors as we find that over the earth there are natural gases and petroleum also which are of different qualities they may have different compositions and the reasons for this variations in the compositions are the nature of the debris and the conditions under which these debris are being converted into petroleum or natural gas let us now look into the various components of natural gas the natural gas has broadly two types of components one are hydrocarbons and another group of components are non hydrocarbons under hydrocarbons again we have two types one is aliphatic hydrocarbons which you might be knowing represent the linear chain hydrocarbons for example i can have a linear chain like they may be consisting of bhul gaya do ekhane hobe the aliphatic hydrocarbons are linear chain hydrocarbons they may be alkene je aba chole asche eta pen set korte hobe sir oho pen set korte hobe sorry no no hmm 
Oh, no, it did be. Bulbo? Aliphatic hydrocarbons are linear chain hydrocarbons and they may be alkene, alkene or alkyne. And what are these? For example, alkene is saturated hydrocarbon with all single bonds. Alkenes are double bonded compounds and alkyne are triple bonded compounds. And under this, we have again various types of hydrocarbons like methane, ethane, propane, butane, etc. And we have to understand that natural gas will contain only the lower hydrocarbons and not the higher ones which are present in the petroleum. So, here generally we have from we call it C1 to about C8 hydrocarbons. Next group of hydrocarbons which are present in natural gas are the aromatics and aromatics are closed ring hydrocarbons. They are generally like some kind of ring, ring structure we have. This you know the famous benzene ring structure and along with benzene we might be having some other alkyl group like toluene or xylene etcetera. So, we have like benzene, toluene, xylene which are sometimes together known as BTX. These three are sometimes given the term BTX. And then we may be having ethyl benzene that is C 2 H 5 and C 6 H 5. After these hydrocarbon components, we have some non hydrocarbon components also. In this we have water, hydrogen sulphide, carbonyl sulphide then carbon disulfide, mercaptans, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, helium, mercury, normally occurring radioactive materials. This normal last one is sometimes in short is called norm. Here I may mention that the helium is produced from natural gas and helium is a very important gas because it is used in superconductivity. Why do we need to remove the impurities? Let us look one by one to the prominent impurities present in the natural gas. First, water because natural gas is coming from under the sea. The presence of water causes various types of problem. One problem is the formation of hydrates. We shall be learning about hydrates later. Here I will just say that hydrates are some kind of compounds which are formed by inclusion of some guest molecules in a cage of water. In case of natural gas, the hydrates formed are from methane, maybe ethane, 
sometimes nitrogen etc and when these hyd hydrates are formed they are like ice they look similar to ice and what they will do they will just simply clog the pipelines or any other accessories so they need to be removed water need to be removed so that these hydrates are not formed secondly the presence of water will cause over saturation of the natural gas which will lead to precipitation of some components in the natural gas and that will again precipitate in the various pipelines or the equipment and thirdly because natural gas has many other acid gases like h2s co2 etc which will react with water and form some weak acids like carbonic acid sulfurous acid and they will be causing corrosion to the various pipelines and the equipment so that is why the water needs to be removed next is hydrogen sulfide that is h2s this h2s will react with water and form some acid that and will lead to corrosion thirdly we have carbonyl sulfide that is cos which will form h2s and co2 in presence of water vapor at high temperature we have some other sulfur compounds like mercaptans mercaptans in general are represented by this formula this r stands for some alkyl group s is for sulfur and h for hydrogen so in case of natural gas we have the alkyl group as methyl group that is ch3 so this methyl group forms mercaptans and this is called methyl mercaptan this mercaptans as such are not harmful because they will not be producing any kind of acid but they are undesirable because they impart some pungent small foul smell to the natural gas and naturally when we are using such kind of gases for our consumption at home or somewhere we do not want the gas to be smelling bad so this mer methyl mercaptans are removed from the natural gas next we have oxygen as another impurity and we know because oxygen is a very reactive gas it can react with various types of components in the natural gas it can oxidize the various components and they can form different types of impurities which may precipitate or it may also cause some damage to the equipment by corrosion next group of impurities are carbon dioxide and nitrogen carbon dioxide is an acid gas which will be making carbonic acid in presence of water whereas nitrogen as such is an inert gas uh, under normal conditions but the presence of nitrogen will increase the volume of the natural gas that and that is not desirable when we are storing the natural gas another impurity is mercury mercury we all know is not environmental friendly and it is not good for our health other than that mercury can damage the heat exchangers which are made from aluminum now we come to the typical composition of natural gas in this we see that the natural gas is mainly 
मिथेन लार्जली मिथेन इफ यू कॉन्ट्रास्ट दिस विद द अदर नेचुरल गैस वी हैव दैट इज एल पी जी विच वी यूज एट अवर होम दैट इज मोस्टली पेंटेन एंड ब्यूटेन अदर देन मिथेन वी ऑल्सो हैव द अदर हाइड्रोकार्बन्स लाइक इथेन प्रोपेन ब्यूटेन एंड नॉन हाइड्रोकार्बन्स लाइक कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड ऑक्सीजन नाइट्रोजन एच टू एस एंड सम रेयर गैसेस लाइक आर्गन हिलियम नियॉन जियोन जेनॉन एसेट्रा दिस कॉम्पोजिशन मे वेरी फ्रॉम रिजर्वर टू रिजर्वर एंड डिपेंडिंग ऑन द रिलेटिव कॉम्पोजिशन द टेक्निक्स ऑफ सेपरेशन एंड प्यूरिफिकेशन ऑफ नेचुरल गैस विल डिफर so it is important for us to know the composition of the natural gas before we decide the type of uh, separation and purification methods we are going to adopt now we come to the various steps which are there in processing of natural gas first is the separation separation means that we are trying to take out those components which are present at in larger quantities and in this separation processes we also produce some kind of petroleum feed stocks and other industrial gases like ethane and helium next is the purification step in this case in this case we remove those components which are not present in large quantity when i say large quantity it is heuristically those components which have less than about 10 mass percent in the natural gas we shall learn about this mole per percent and mass percent later the last process for the upstream lng system is the liquefaction in this the natural gas is liquefied for two reasons firstly by liquefying it we can store a given mass of the natural gas in a smaller volume and secondly by doing so we increase the energy density of the gas the energy density is defined as the calorific value of the natural gas per unit volume of the gas stored now in this figure we are showing the main unit operations which are there for the production of the natural gas first we see here the oil field from which we are getting natural gas we find that in a typical oil field the gas exists over the petroleum oil and beneath the oil we have some water and in some oil fields we do not have much of petroleum we have only gas and water and this is the reason that when we are trying to extract the natural gas we find the amount of water in the natural gas will be quite high now these natural gas come through some oil well gas well and then they are filtrated to remove some of the debris or some of the sludges and some muds and they are compressed and then sent for the processing unit in which we have various types of treating systems about which we shall be learning in the course and in this case one important thing is that removal of co2 the co2 is removed and may be utilized for the uh, extraction of the oil itself by the methods which in short is called e o r carbon dioxide may be used to extract the oil again by what we call eor that is enhanced oil recovery 
and then we have the natural gas coming out after the processing and in this case we are finding that various components other than the methane are also obtained. And in this figure, which has been taken from the US Energy Information Administration, here we see that what all processes are needed to get the natural gas in the usable form to the consumers from the natural gas well. Here we find that after we take the natural gas from the gas well, it is undergoing separation and we are removing the various oils and water and some of the gases are vented and flared and then they are taken to the gas processing plant and in this we are removing the various types of impurities and then it is going to compression by compression we are reducing the volume after compression it may be taken for cells or it is for further it may be some odorant may be given to test its uh, leakage problem and then it will be liquefied and put as LNG storage or it may also be put under the ground for storage and whatever form we store it as then ultimately it will be going to the consumers. So, broadly this whole system can be divided into three parts first is the production second is transmission and lastly that is the distribution let us now end this chapter by knowing some of the terminologies which are used in the natural gas and petroleum industries first is natural gas which consists of some water inert gases and some lower hydrocarbons. Secondly, we have natural gas liquids which are formed under pressure. Thirdly, we have LPG that is liquefied petroleum gas which is basically uh, propane and butane and we use it at our home. Next is liquefied natural gas that is LNG and you can note the temperatures of LPG and LNG, LNG is at very low temperature. Then we have compressed natural gas and this is at very high pressure of the order of about 200 bars. Then we have condensed liquid which consists of hydrocarbons which are bit of higher molecular weight than natural gas and they are basically the C4 and C7 fractions that in butane up to heptane. And lastly, we have the heavier oil fractions. With this, we come to the introductory lecture on natural gas. In the future lectures, we shall be talking of some more fundamentals. Thank you.